Welcome. Welcome, Se Secretary Panetta. So, as I said, and as you just heard, there is a lot Mr. of uncertainty. Nice to be with you. <laughs> on this very, very important day, there is a lot of uncertainty. You heard what the German Foreign Affairs Committee chief said, that we just don't know what is going to be, or who is, the Trump who ends up on Inauguration Day going to be. What would you say today? Well, I, I think there's a lot of truth to that uh, concern because uh, we really don't know uh, which President Trump is going to show up in the Oval Office. Uh, is it the, uh, uh, the campaigner who said a lot of irresponsible statements about uh, the world uh, and, uh, you know, made some, uh, some comments that reflected a lack of understanding about the complexities in today's world? Uh, or is it going to be uh, the president-elect Trump, who uh, election night spoke about unity and today in the meeting with the president uh, appeared to be much more willing to uh, work with those who better understand what's going on in the world? Mm -hmm. Right now, we just don't know uh, which president uh, Trump is going to appear. Uh, just as we're talking, we're showing some video that was taken about five minutes ago. Uh, Donald Trump, his wife Melania, the vice president-elect, and the speaker of the House at Capitol Hill. Uh, to that end, before we go deep into foreign policy, let me ask you about domestic policy. You were chief of staff, you were CIA director, and you were defense secretary. What do you think is going to happen next? Is it a... Republican president with a Republican Congress that's going to be able to essentially rail through any policies that they desire? Or do you believe, given the acrimony between Donald Trump as candidate and the Republican establishment, including uh, Speaker Ryan, is there going to be revenge fights? Is there going to be sort of an accounting domestically? What do you foresee in that regard? Well, the first priority for uh, the new president uh, is really the ability to break the gridlock in Washington and to be able to govern uh, in our democracy. Uh, that's going to be essential. Uh, the second uh, important thing is to obviously exert world leadership in a very troubled world. Uh, with regards to uh, the first element of governing, uh, the, the, the bottom line here is that we're not sure whether Donald Trump is really a Republican. He took on the Republican establishment. A lot of re Republicans walked away from him during the campaign. He obviously has angered uh, the Democratic side uh, of the House as well and of the Congress. Uh, so there is a chance here, again, for someone to, like Trump, to develop a coalition, a working coalition of both Democrats and Republicans uh, to be able to govern. He's going to need that because otherwise, uh, if he moves forward uh, with uh, whatever he proposes, he could run into serious problems, not only with uh, the Republican majorities, uh, but also uh, with the Democrats as well. So he has got to build a working coalition, probably closer to the center, if he's going to be able to govern. Now, you know many of, the, many of the sort of grandees of the Republican Party, whether it's in foreign policy establishment or, or other areas of government, simply abandoned him as a candidate. And there are certain names that have been floated by his own campaign as to who might be in power, or in positions of power. People like General Michael Flynn, people like Rudy Giuliani, uh, people like Newt Gingrich. How important is it who is around him, and do you think that the Republican hierarchy or the, the, the creme de la creme of the Republican Party will come back to him if asked? Well, if uh, President-elect Trump is smart, he will really try to reach out to uh, Republicans who have good credentials on foreign policy issues. A lot of them walked away from him uh, during the campaign. Uh, there were, of course, a lot of establishment Republicans who walked away from him as well. But if he's serious about trying to unify the country, then I think it's really important for him to reach out and try to get the best talent available uh, to be able to support his administration. Uh, every president needs good people in cabinet positions, good people in the White House staff who uh, are willing to, to work with the president, advise the president, 
and try to provide the best possible consul that a president can receive. This is a complex world. It's a troubled world. Uh, it's a complex uh, world here in the United States in terms of dealing with a lot of domestic issues. If he's going to be president of the United States and he has that awesome responsibility on his shoulders now, then the smartest thing he could do is to reach out for the smartest people, the most experienced people, to try to help him in governing this country. What worries you the most in terms of foreign policy? You know, you, I said you've been Defense Secretary, CIA Director, also Chief of Staff uh, to President Clinton. Russia has been a very troubling and vexing uh, relationship for the United States and as you know and we talked about this before we talked when Donald Trump appeared to invite Russian hacking into the democratic system and into Hillary Clinton's emails and into the US infrastructure uh, we know that there's a sort of rapprochement a cozying up a mutual admiration society between Putin and Trump tell us today what that means for the future and what a president of the United States has to do to keep America safe on that on that stand? Well, it's, it's very important for uh, a president-elect to uh, look at uh, the problems in the world today. And there are a number of flashpoints, as you know, uh, throughout the world. Uh, terrorism, uh, the situation in the Middle East, uh, the problems with uh, Iran, problems with North Korea, uh, the problems with China. Uh, but uh, also the problems with Russia. Uh, we clearly have entered a kind of new chapter in the Cold War in dealing with the President Putin. Uh, and the real question is going to be, will a new president uh, capitulate uh, to, uh, to Putin? Uh, will uh, a new president uh, draw the lines uh, on Putin and uh, on uh, Russia? Uh, Will a new president operate and uh, be able to deal with him from strength, uh, or will that president deal with him from weakness? Th those are the issues. If you're going to deal with Putin, uh, and uh, you know we know we know Putin, we we understand who he is. Uh, he is somebody you can deal with, but the only way you deal with a Putin is from strength. You cannot deal with him from weakness. So the real question with the new president is whether or not. Uh, you know, he made some comments about his relationship with Russia. Uh, in the end, the question is going to be, how does a new president protect our national security interests in the world? And to protect our national security interests in the world, uh, this president is going to have to take a strong stand with regards to our dealings with Russia. It's not to say we can't work out agreements. It's not to say that we can't reconcile some of our differences. We should try to do that. But in the end, that will only happen if the president-elect uh, is strong uh, and indicates that there are lines that the Russians should not be able to cross. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you also, because uh, President Obama came in uh, in part as a sort of a backlash against some of the extreme policies, including war, including torture, waterboarding of the Bush years. And now Donald Trump on the campaign trail has said the following about, uh, about let's say, enhanced interrogation. Let's play this, and I'm going to ask you. We're fighting on a different level, folks. And we have to be tough, and we have to be smart. And we have to be, in some cases, pretty vicious, to be honest with you. So, you know, he said before, waterboarding is peanuts compared to many alternatives. Fight fire with fire. Do you expect that the establishment is going to allow this kind of policy to re-enter America? And will officials in America be beholden to follow those policies if ordered to do so? Well, the issue isn't whether the establishment will let them do it. The issue is whether the Constitution of the United States will let them do it. Um, uh, the question is going to be uh, if he decides, and hopefully he will not decide to do this, to somehow uh, restore uh, torture uh, to uh, the process of, uh, of interrogation. Uh, can he get a legal opinion from the Justice Department that will support that? Uh, because uh, if, uh, if the Justice Department says that that uh, approach to interrogation violates our Constitution, uh, then he's going to have a very difficult time uh, enforcing that approach within our country and, frankly, will create a constitutional crisis. 
So rather than have a, a new president uh, suddenly engage in developing constitutional crises uh, in our country, I think it would be far better for him to abide by our Constitution, uh, put in place those values that are important to the United States of America, not only here, but in the rest of the world as well. As we're, as we're talking, uh, Donald Trump, uh, his vice president, his wife, along with Senator Mitch McConnell in Congress, we're showing live pictures as we discuss that very important issue. And finally, before I let you go, and obviously there are many, many issues around the world to, to go into detail with, but, you know, President Obama said that he was unfit for office. You, when we last talked, said that he was temperamentally and exper experientially unfit. Have you changed your mind? You know, I, I'm prepared uh, to accept uh, the vote of the American people uh, who elected Donald Trump uh, as our president-elect. Uh, the people have spoken. Uh, and now the question will be whether the president-elect is going to be somebody who's responsible uh, and provides uh, clear leadership for this country, uh, or whether he engages in some of the crazy policies that he talked about uh, during the campaign. So I, I, I am hopeful right now, based on his election night statement, based on his meetings with the president, that he understands the awesome responsibility he has uh, as president-elect of the United States, and that he'll be more the businessman Trump than the candidate Trump. And if that is the case, uh, then I think there's some hope that ultimately uh, we will be able to deal with the kind of issues, both at home and abroad, that confront this country. Leon Panetta, thank you very much again for joining us, and we hope to continue our conversations on this issue with you going forward. Thank you so much indeed.